Now let's build on those equations some more. So we said that execution time is a function of the number of clock cycles times the length of each clock and the number of clock cycles itself is a function of the number of instructions in that program and the average time it takes me to do every instruction in, in terms of clock cycles, right? Or in other words, the CPI. So if you look at this example down over here, I'm assuming a 2 gigahertz processor that graduates an instruction in every third cycle. That means every instruction roughly takes three cycles to finish. So a CPI of three. And the question is, how many instructions are there in this program if it runs for 10 seconds, right? So if you look at the overall execution time equation, this is combining this equation up at the top and the equation on the previous slide. So it says that the total execution time is a, is a function of the length of each clock cycle times the number of clock cycles, which itself is the number of instructions times the average CPI. Okay, so if you plug the information over here into this equation up here, you can figure out exactly how many instructions there are, right? So execution time was 10 seconds. The clock cycle time is one by clock speed. So it's one by two times 10 raised to nine. And the average CPI is three, right? So the number of instructions equals 10 times 2 times 10 to the 9 divided by 3. Right, so it's essentially 6.67 billion instructions. So let's just analyze this final performance equation a little bit more, right? So it's made up of these three terms, right? So execution time for a program is a function of these three terms. The first is clock cycle time. And what determines clock cycle time? It is firstly the manufacturing process and the quality of the technology. That is just how fast are the transistors? Just how fast can I finish the work in every single circuit? It's a function of technology and it's a function of how I organize my pipeline stages, right? And this is something we'll discuss more uh, in detail later. The second factor is the number of instructions. And the number of instructions is a function of the quality of the compiler. So if I write a program in C, how good is my compiler at converting this into the least number of instructions possible? It's also a function of how I design my processor and my instruction set architecture. That is, what kinds of instructions does this processor support? And accordingly, the compiler then uses those instructions to convert the program from source code into assembly level instructions. The third factor CPI is again a function of, of the instructions that I provide because if I provide you know large clunky instructions they're going to take more cycles to finish. It's also a function of how efficiently I can design my processor so that you know work gets done in the shortest amount of time possible. So architecture or computer organization primarily impacts these two things over here. It also has an impact on this one because of the pipelines which, which we'll discuss later. Now let me try to consolidate what you've learned with another example, right? So we will again rely on this um, this equation here for execution time. And I'm now going to try and compare two different systems. Okay, so let's take a program that is, that is running on two different systems. One is using a MIPS architecture. And MIPS is the architecture that we'll be using throughout this course. That's the instruction set that's used in the textbook as well. And the second system that I'm running the same program on is using the Intel x86 instruction set. Okay, so this program, when compiled for the MIPS architecture, requires 4 billion instructions. And the processor is implemented so that, on average, every instruction takes 1.5 cycles, so the CPI is 1.5. And I'm able to run the circuits fast enough that I have a clock speed of 1 gigahertz. Okay, similarly on the other processor, the compiler is able to convert the program into 2 billion instructions and the architecture is such that it can be implemented with a clock speed of 1.5 gigahertz, that is a faster clock speed, but on average every instruction takes longer to finish, that means I have a CPI of 6. Okay, so let's look at the execution time for that same program on the first architecture. So clock cycle time is 1 by 1 gigahertz times the number of instructions, which is 4 billion, times the average CPI of 1.5. Right, so this program takes 6 seconds to finish on the MIPS processor. For the x86 processor, doing the same thing, I have 1 by 1.5 gigahertz times the number of instructions, which is 2 times 10 to the 9, times a CPI of 6. 
right? And this gives me eight seconds, right? So the program actually takes longer to run on the x86 architecture even though it has a faster clock speed, right? So for the longest time, I'm guessing you have assumed that a higher clock speed implies higher performance, but that's not always the case. Performance is also determined by the number of instructions and how long it takes, how many cycles it takes to do each instruction, right? So once you factor all of these in, in this example, it turns out that the MIPS architecture runs this particular program faster.